can change. We're very fortunate to have with us Edward Zellum, who is a board member of Global Impact and an awful lot more. Edward, welcome. Thank you. So let's get it right out of the way. You are active military right now. I am. I'm an active duty U.S. Uh, Navy captain, although here as a Global Impact board member, I'm speaking in my private capacity as a private citizen. And you've also written books. I, I have. I've, uh, I've developed a hobby of uh, collecting Afghan proverbs while I was uh, deployed in Afghanistan. and. Uh, those have become uh, two books in English and Dari, uh, and they've been translated into six languages. Uh, they're all, all available worldwide. Afghansayings.com is, uh, is the website. Yeah, and we're going to get that up on the screen, but, uh, but the book itself about Afghan proverbs, what made you want to write a book like that? Well, I, I, when I arrived in Afghanistan, and I, I'm a trained Dari speaker, and uh, I found very quickly that Afghans speak in proverbs all the time. It's very, they have a very colorful way of speaking that goes back to the courts of ancient Persia. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I started writing them down, and uh, you know, one thing led to another, and some kids at a local high school in Kabul illustrated uh, some proverbs for me, and uh, those became a book, and those that's available worldwide to support Afghan literacy charities. Mm -hmm. Should I put you on the spot and ask you to say Rainmakers uh, TV in, in uh, that language that you were talking about? Uh, well, I believe Rainmakers, uh, Baran is rain, so uh, uh, Barani TV. Okay. Uh, that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's talk about Global Impact now. Um, what is it that, I mean, Global Impact is, is just what it says. It's making an impact around the globe in a positive way. Uh, through many many organizations, what is it that drew you to that organization? Well, you know, you know, in 26 years, you know, in, in the Navy, I've, I've traveled the world, you know, been in a couple of wars, seen a lot of tragedy, uh, you know, and, and seen a lot of hope too. And, and one of the things that struck me throughout uh, is that, uh, you know, some of the people who are suffering the most are really the most optimistic and hopeful and courageous. You know, and so anything I can do to help that, uh, you know. I'm on board, and Global Impact is, is, uh, is a great organization that, that does exactly that, uh, provides assistance and aid to the world's most vulnerable people. Can the world's most vulnerable people not be so vulnerable anymore? Well, I think there are always going to be vulnerabilities in the world. Uh, you know, the world is, is never going to be a perfect place. And so um, organizations like Global Impact are, are absolutely vital, you know, in, in brokering global philanthropy. You know, so many businesses, corporations, you know, public and private sector, you know, many people want to help, but a lot of people don't know how to. And uh, so what Global Impact is very good at doing is, is, is providing, you know, fully integrated solutions that, that helps a corporation, for example, get the most bang for its buck mm -hmm. uh, in workplace giving or other, other campaigns. You know, that's, it's interesting that you talk about that because over the past several years right here on Rainmakers, we've noticed more and more organizations wanting to work together but needing a place to go for help. And it sounds like the organization Global Impact is that one. Well, that's exactly right. I mean, Global Impact is, is a guide or a navigator. Uh, you can think of it that way to, uh, you know, it's, it's a very complex web of, of NGOs and charities and foundations. And, and so what Global Impact uh, is very good at is, is, is helping somebody who wants to help get that help to get their charitable work, you know, to the right place in the right way and with the most bang for the buck. What do you think is, is the biggest need? Of, we've talked about vulnerable people, we've talked about partnerships, we've talked about lots of people wanting to do things. What do you think is the biggest need that needs to be served that actually can be done, can be accomplished? Well, you know, in my view, and this gets back to my work with Afghan Proverbs, you know, I, I believe that education and literacy uh, is, is really the key to, to developing the developing world. Um, you know, without education and literacy, you know, you're, you're condemning, you know, huge masses of people to, you know, weaving carpets and making tin pots and, you know, you know, very, very, uh, you know, basic things. You know, education and, and literacy, you know, can raise an entire population up to where they can begin to help themselves. And so, uh, you know, it kind of goes back to the old uh, proverb, you know, you can uh, give a man a fish and have a meal, you know, you teach a man to fish, you know, and he can, he can eat for his whole life. So uh, that's my view. You know, interesting that you would, would talk about fishing. I was in uh, a fishing village in a developing country recently, and it appeared that they were doing things today the same way that was probably done 500 years ago. Um, at the same point in time, there seemed to be a spirit of wanting to 
to modernize. Is, is, is that right? Uh, or do the people just... I do think that's right. And I think you probably might have observed something else there that uh, many of those people probably had cell phones. Yes, they did. Uh, that's right. And uh, even smartphones. And so, several of them. Actually. Right. So, <laughs> so even though people live in a traditional lifestyle, you know, centuries or millennia old, you know, they also are aware that there's a world out there that they can tap into and they can connect with, you know, and, and a lot of them really want to do that, especially the young people, because they see opportunity, you know, they see education, you know, and, and, and many of them really do want to reach out to the world. You know, no man is an island. There's another proverb for you, you know, yeah. and uh, that's the way people feel. People want to connect. What do you think, what's next for Global Impact? If we were to be sitting here in five years, let's say, and you would have been on the board for five years or, or however many a long time at that point, and what do you think are going to be the accomplishments of Global Impact next? Well, you know, Global Impact is, is really pursuing avenues in the private sector, you know, much more than it had in the past. You know, public sector giving is drying up, economies are having problems globally, you know, the U.S. economy being one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, but the elements of the private sector are doing very well, and the private sector wants to help. And so I think where Global Impact can and will excel over the next five years, and this is part of the strategic plan, is to, is to work more with the private sector to, uh, to help the world's most vulnerable people. And is that what you're going to do as a Global Impact Board member? That's exactly what I want to do. I, uh, you know, I, I believe in the cause. I, I believe in the effects. And uh, I think Global Impact is a, is a great organization that can, can help do that. Edward, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you very much. Rainmaker believes we can change the world. One life, one heart, one soul, one mind.